Welcome. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at various types of bracketing symbols in addition to building tables and arrays. One of the most commonly used types of bracketing symbols are parentheses, and if we want to use parentheses, we can simply type them using the keyboard. For example, if we want the quantity x plus 1, we just type the parentheses in math mode, and when we build our file, we see the quantity x plus 1. Likewise, if we want to use square brackets, we'll just type them on the keyboard. So we might have 3, and then in square brackets, 2 plus, and then parentheses, the quantity x plus 1. Close my parentheses, close my bracket, and close math mode. If we build that, we've got um, our parentheses, we also have our set of square brackets. If we want to use curly brackets, okay, so for example, if we have the set of three elements A, B, C, and I build this, we don't actually see the curly brackets displayed. And that's because the curly brackets are reserved symbols used for coding in LaTeX. If we want to display a curly bracket, we have to go back and put a backslash in front of it. And that's true for the opening bracket as well as the closing bracket. If we put the backslash in front of the bracket, uh, then the compiler knows to actually display that symbol. So now when I build it, it should show me those curly brackets. And there they are around our set ABC. Likewise, the dollar symbol is reserved for coding to put something in math mode. So if we want to actually display a dollar symbol, it's not enough to just type it. We would have to put a backslash in front of it. So for example, um, backslash dollar sign twelve dollars and fifty five cents. and that displays our $12.55 with our dollar symbol from putting the backslash in front of the symbol. If I have a tall object and I want to put parentheses around it, then it's not enough to just type the parentheses on the keyboard. It's going to look kind of funny. For example, if we have three times the quantity so if I just type my parentheses, and then in here let's put in the fraction two-fifths. So backslash frac two-fifths. And I build. It looks a little bit funny because the parentheses are too short. I would like the parentheses to expand to the height of the object inside. And we can do that if we go back to where we inserted the parenthesis. In front of it, we put backslash, and then either left or right. So for the opening parenthesis, I would do backslash left. And for the closing parenthesis, I would put backslash right. Let's rebuild that. And now you can see that the parentheses have, in fact, expanded to accommodate the height of the object. Now we can do the same thing for square brackets and curly brackets as well. So I'm going to just copy and paste this code and instead of backslash left parenthesis, I'll use backslash left square bracket and backslash right square bracket. Okay, so our square brackets have expanded in height to accommodate the size of the object inside. And we can do the same for our curly braces. Now remember with the curly braces we have to put a backslash in front of the curly brace as well. And there we go. absolute value works the same way. So we could have the absolute value of x, and if we just type it on the keyboard, we're using that pipe, k 
key, absolute value of x, we don't need to insert back, backslash left or backslash right um, if we have a short object. But if we have something larger inside, like a fraction, So let's say we have x over x plus 1. And we can see it would look much better if those absolute value symbols uh, were taller. So again, we'll go back in front of the symbol and we'll do a backslash left for the opening symbol and a backslash right in front of the closing symbol. And that has now expanded in height. Now every time you use a left bracketing symbol, the compiler is going to expect to find a matching right bracketing symbol. But sometimes we only want to use a single bracket. If you use the code for a left bracketing symbol and you simply leave off the right bracketing symbol, you're going to run into an error when you try and build your file. Or vice versa, if you leave off a left bracketing symbol and you only uh, put in the code for the right bracketing symbol, again, you're going to run into an error when you try and build your file. But there is a way to work around that. Let's say, for example, we want to use a left curly bracket, so backslash left and then backslash curly bracket and we're going to wrap that around x squared and so then um, the matching curly bracket would be backslash right backslash right curly bracket and then we could come out of math mode but suppose we only want to show the left hand bracket and not the right so what we, we would do is delete the actual symbol. We'll leave the slash right, but we'll replace the character with a period. And this time when we build, it simply won't display that right-hand bracket. This will work to hide left-hand brackets as well. For example, slash left, let's do an absolute value, around the fraction dy over dx and then we'll do the right hand absolute value symbol and on that right hand absolute value symbol I'm going to use a subscript of x equals 1 so this is something you might see in calculus. Now if we compile it, it's going to show both the left and right absolute value symbols. But this notation that I'm trying to write here actually isn't absolute value. We want that right vertical bar, but not the left. So to hide that left vertical bar, I just replace that character with a period. And now when I build, it will not display the left-hand bracket. 